The first law of thermodynamics. So in some arbitrary system, so here's an arbitrary system on the bottom right-hand corner, um, we've got now a region of interest. Okay, so we've got our system, which is great. We've got our dotted line. We've got some masses coming in, mass one and mass two coming into the system. We've got some mass exiting the system, ME. Mass one and mass two exiting the system. We've got some heat transfer, possibly into, possibly out of the system, and we've got some work going on, putting energy into the system or pulling energy out of the system. So this is the generic case. We'll do some formulas to, to show the generic case, and then we will pare it all down and just say, okay, let's get rid of a lot of those things, look at a simple case, we'll build back up to the complicated case. So this is the most generic case, and then we'll, we'll start from something simpler and move towards this. Conservation laws. Mass is neither created nor destroyed. We should be happy with that. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. This isn't true in nuclear processes, but if you're dealing with nuclear processes, you're beyond second year thermodynamics. Um, so you deal with conservation of energy in uh, looking at the difference between kinetic and potential energy. Right? Uh, potential energy converted to kinetic and so forth. We're going to be interested in thermal energy a lot more than you were, but it may cha change forms. So you've got chemical energy and you burn the substance, you get heat. You've got kinetic energy, you've got friction, you get heat. Um, it all comes back to, to heat. So, that V shouldn't be there, that's okay. So, because mass must be conserved, if you've got mass coming into the system, okay, so this is just a summation of however many inlets you've got, okay, and you've got mass exiting the system, and this is just a summation of how many exits you've got, um, then that must equal the change of mass in the system. Add three kilos, remove one kilo, you're two kilos heavier. On a rate basis, that means that the rate of whatever's coming into minus the rate of whatever's leaving must be the differential of mass with respect to time. So it's the same thing, but just saying on a, on a differential basis with respect to time, um, we've got mass entering and exiting, it must equal a change in the system. You're filling, a, filling up the bath and you've got a slow leak, the bath is filling. You're trying to get your son out of the bath and he turns on the tap, the bath egg empties slower. Um, sorry, that's it's obviously something that relates to me and less to most of you. Um, when we've got mass, flow, we can represent that as density times volumetric flow. Um, we can represent volumetric flow as area times velocity and so forth. So there's a couple of different ways to get mass flow. Um, that's one of them. But the idea is you're putting mass into the system, you're taking mass out of the system, that's resulting in a change of mass of the system because mass must be conserved. If a system, so we talked about clo uh, isolated, closed, and open systems yesterday. If a system is closed, how does this equation simplify? Zero what? Zero. zero. What's zero? Well, Lich well, yes. Literally everything. You've got no inlets, you've got no outlets, there can be no change of mass in the system. Okay, so we start with a very generic broad case, and then say, oh wait, we know when we can make a simplification. So we like making simplifications, because it makes the maths, e maths easier. We'll talk a bit about steady state systems later, um, but a steady state system is one that's not static. Okay, so in mechanics, you're used to things either being static or dynamic. They're either still or they're moving. Uh, although you can treat a system as static if it's not accelerating. And that's what we kind of do with steady state systems. So if my aforementioned bath example, I had the tap on and the plug out, you can imagine there's water flowing into the bath, there's water flowing out of the bath, the level's not changing. We'd call that a steady state system. So the mass in is exactly equal to the mass out. 
and assume that the temperatures are the same and so forth. We'll get to that in a moment. So in a steady state system then, what can we simplify out of this equation? Change in mass becomes zero. Change in mass becomes zero. Excellent. So your change in mass with respect to time comes down to zero. And so whatever your summation in inlets equals, you can take that minus sign out, throw it on the other side, equals the summation of the exits. And so knowing that, knowing you've got a system at steady state, and lots of systems become steady state over time, um, you can simplify that off as well. So that's our con conservation of mass. The other thing we were conserving was energy. I don't, it looks trivial, it'll become more complicated later. Um, thermodynamics always gets criticized for having really complicated formulas. Uh, the energy you put into a system minus the energy that you take out of a system must equate to the change of energy in the system if energy is conserved. On a rate basis, the energy transfer into and out of a system equals the change in energy with respect to time of that system. Right? So same thing with, with mass. We're doing it with energy. How might energy be transferred to or from a system? Heat, good. Mechanical work. Mechanical work, I'll take that. Oh, oh no, and you weren't even watching. There's, there's one more that's it's less intuitive, all right? But say, um, take, my, take my bath example, all right? Because I like it. Um, say he's got the tap on cold. Because if you had the tap on hot, I would turn it off. So he's got the tap on cold, but the bath was nominally hot. You've got cold water flowing into the bath and warm water flowing out of the bath, right? You also get energy transfer associated with the energy associated with mass flow, right? So the cold water is bringing energy into the bath with it. The warm water is taking energy out of the bath with it but the warm water has more thermal energy than the cold water did. And so over time, the bath is becoming colder because of the conservation of energy. I hope that, I'm hoping this is working for you. Um, you could get lots of mass flows, so lots of heats, lots of works, and lots of, um, lots of mass flows. We'll define work a little bit more um, as we go along as well. It doesn't have to be mechanical work, it can be electrical work, um, and there's some other things. Just a, a note on convention, sign convention. Um, this is a problem you might have if you search this on the internet. This minus here is sometimes written as a plus. So Q plus W plus E. Um, we, well, as a convention for this course, we'll consider if you are adding heat to a system, then that's positive. If, you're, if the heat is leaving the system, that's negative heat. Right? And we will say, if the system is doing work against the surroundings, then that's positive work. And if work is being done to the system by the surroundings, that's negative work. Okay? So, because, and, and that's the convention that this was invented with, because often, Heat is the thing you're adding. So in an internal combustion engine, for example, heat's the thing you're adding and work's the thing you want. So it makes sense to have those as both quanti positive quantities. There needs to be a minus in here for this to work. So just watch that convention. We'll talk about it more. But you might see it the other way around. Um, don't get tripped up. In a closed system, this becomes quite nice. And the closed system is what we'll start, start with. Oh, there you go. I didn't have it. That's all right. So in a closed system, there's no mass flow. That's the definition of a closed, closed system. So in a closed system, you just have Q and W. You don't have any mass flow energy. So your energy transfer just becomes a subtraction of those two things. For a steady state system, then there's no change in energy over time. 
Uh, and so we need to go back to the other equation. To get that for an isolated system, there's also no heat and work and no mass flow. So there's no energy transfer at all. So that kind of simplifies those things. That's our, our overarching introduction to the first law of thermodynamics.